Hello and welcome back to the FPC series of technical videos. Right now we are on the operations rail. The operations rail is where we go to move the pipes in the theater. So we have pipes that are called battens that are above the stage and they move up and down and we can attach things to them. We can attach lighting instruments to them, scenery, curtains, drops, um, pretty much anything that we want, and it allows us to change things very quickly. If we have a theatrical backdrop and we put it on a pipe, we can fly it out, we can fly it in whenever we would like it to come around. Um, that is a very important thing to do in professional theater. So most professional theaters will have a counterweight system like this. It's called the counterweight system because that's how it works. It kind of balances like a seesaw. If you remember when you were very young, a seesaw like this, one person would sit on one side and another person would sit on the other. If you were the same weight and you lifted your feet up, you would just kind of balance like that. If a very heavy person was on one side and a very light person was on the other, this is going to happen and there's going to be a catastrophe. One person's going to go flying. The same thing will happen on this counterweight system if it is not used correctly. So there's inherent risk and danger if you use this incorrectly. However, just like anything, if you understand it, you can use it safely. So that is our goal always when we teach things like this is to make sure that people can understand them. So we have some basic pieces and parts that we're going to take a look at. First one, well, we're going to start with the batten, and the battens are on the stage, and that is the long pipe that we can attach things to. They go across the entire length of the stage, and then we attach whatever we want to them, and then we can move them up and down. Attached to each one of the battens is what is called a lift line. A lift line is a piece of aircraft cable. The aircraft cable comes down, and it attaches right to the batten itself. Um, and then the aircraft cable or the lift lines go up, 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 all the way up to the ceiling of the loft. The loft is the area that's above the stage. And up there, attached to the ceiling of the loft, we have what are called the loft blocks. The loft blocks are actually clamped on and attached to the I-beams that are holding up the roof of the loft. So this is where all the, the lifting is actually taking place. So when you have an underhung counterweight system like we have here at the Flagler Auditorium, that roof above the loft is acting like the arm of the crane. So everything is being attached to it here, and that's where all the lifting is actually occurring. So clamped onto them are the loft blocks, and blocks look like little wheels. It kind of looks like a train wheel with a little slot in the side of it for the aircraft cable to go across. Anytime you see something like that, lots of times people and students will say, oh, that's a pulley. It looks like a pulley, but in theater we call them blocks, B-L-O-C-K-S. So the lift line will go through the loft blocks, and then it will come across, across. Directly above us we have the loading platform, and you're going to see some uh, close-up information of that very, very soon. The lift lines go through and across to what is called the head block. The head block is a large drum, and it's got a slot for each of the six lift lines. They pass through and they come down and they attach to the arbor. You can see some of the arbors here that are directly to the, the right of me right here. The arbors are where the counterweight or the bricks are stacked. The bricks themselves are 33 pounds of solid steel. We place them in the arbor and that's the other side of our seesaw. So on one side of our seesaw we have our batten that has its items on it. And on the other side of our seesaw we have the arbor. So that's where the counterweight is being placed. When we move the line set, we're moving the arbor up or down, and the batten is doing the exact opposite. So we're putting the same weight on, and that allows us to move things fairly easily, and you don't have to be a big, strong person up here to be able to lift them a lot of weight in order to make this happen. So the arbors are right here. What I have my hand on right here, these are arbors. When you look at the arbors, you will see some of them have just these orange bricks on them, these orange bricks right here, and some of them have the orange bricks and then they have other bricks on the top of them. Um, the orange bricks are what we call pipe weight. So even an empty pipe in theater is going to have some weight to it. The orange bricks are these brightly painted bricks. Some theaters they're yellow, some they're red. We have this very bright orange color. Um, they're there to tell you stop, do not remove them. If you remove these orange bricks, even the empty pipe is going to be out of weight. And the goal is to never have anything out of weight because that's where the danger occurs. So we always want to make sure that things are in weight. 
Um, then the uh, 33 pounds of steel go on top of those orange bricks in order to counterbalance it. So to counterbalance it, you need to be able to do a basic division problem. Each brick weighs 33 pounds. You need to be able to divide 33 into that weight if it's a single purchase, or if it's a double purchase, you're going to divide it, and then you got to do times two. Double purchase and single purchase. When you look at the bottom of the arbor, and again, the arbor is where the bricks are stacked, you will see a rope going into the bottom of it. If you see one rope going into the bottom of that arbor, that is a single purchase line set. Single purchase line set. A single purchase line set means there's enough rope on this operating line for the pipe to go all the way to the floor, but it will only go halfway up the ceiling. It will not go all the way to the ceiling of the loft. Single purchase line sets are counterbalanced one to one. So if there's 200 pounds of something on the pipe, you're going to put 200 pounds of counterweight in the counterweight arbor to balance it out, just like your seesaw when you were a child. Double purchase line sets, if you look at those, at the bottom of the arbor, you will see a block, and it's got two ropes that turn around there. That is a double purchase line set. A double purchase line set has enough rope for the pipe to go all the way to the floor and all the way to the ceiling, so it has that extra rope. Because of that extra travel, Whatever weight you put in here has to be times two. So if you have 200 pounds of something on the pipe, on a double purchase line set in your arbor, you're going to have to put 400 pounds of counterweight in order to balance that correctly. The operations line, which is this rope that's right here, this doesn't do any lifting. This is just allows us to move the arbor up and down, and in turn, the batten is going to go up or down. It coils around and attaches to the bottom of the arbor, and it attaches to the top of the arbor. There's no lifting power here, it's just moving the arbor. All of the lifting power is above our heads in the aircraft cable and the loft blocks and the head blocks. That's what's doing all of the heavy lifting. So to operate the line sets, we have rope locks. Rope locks are right here, and when you look at them, it looks like a little handle that's right here. To operate the line set, you're gonna take the rope and pull it towards you, lift the ring off of the rope lock and pull down on the rope lock. The rope lock is a very simple device. It's two metal knuckles that are just squeezing the rope. More of a break than a lock. But if things are in balance, it's definitely going to stop them. Now you're ready to operate the line set. Anytime that you're going to move a pipe on stage, you have to give a warning to people on the deck. This is in a classroom situation. This is in a load-in situation. In a show situation, you're not going to be able to holler. But at that point, we're assuming things have been rehearsed properly so that everybody knows what's going to happen. But in a classroom situation like we're in right now or a load-in situation, it's really important that you give that warning. And here's how you do it. Pipes moving on the deck! Make sure it's very loud, make sure it's very clear. If someone else is in the theater, I usually like to wait to hear a response. So I hear something from the deck that says, okay, good, copy, understand, however you want to communicate. But you don't want to ever bring pipes down without giving people that warning. That's a huge hazard. You can cause serious injury to people or death if you're not careful. So I've given my warning and I've unlocked my line set. Also notice the line set is unlocked and nothing has happened to the pipe because it is counterbalanced properly. It's not going to move until I make it move. The way that I like to move these is reach up nice and high so you can get some of your body weight into this, pull down, and it should move fairly easily. So as I'm pulling down on this rope, the arbor is traveling up. If the arbor is traveling up, the pipe on stage is coming in and you keep moving it until it gets to where you would like it to be. Once it's ready to go, you can then fly it back out. To whatever position you need. And then to lock it, you just push the handle back up, put the ring lock around it, and everything is good. One other piece and part that we want to take a look at is, at the bottom there, you'll see another block this is called the take-up block. The purpose of the take-up block, again, no lifting power. It's just to keep some tension on the ropes so the ropes don't get very loose. That's the only purpose of that. The line sets can also be labeled. You can see some of them right here do have some labels on them. 
usually just the little five by seven cards that we can put in there, the three by fives, excuse me. We can put them right in there and label what they are. And some of them have these permanent labels on them, like the second electric and the band shells, which we are never going to move uh, because there is no need to do that. We also have a clear comm up here. Just as you had learned in a previous lesson, here's the box and there's a headset over here as well. But during the show, the clear comm is how you would communicate when you're going to move a line set. Again, there's a lot of hazard and a lot of risk with the counterweight system, but just like any piece of equipment, if you understand it, you can use it safely. So that is our number one goal here. To place the counterweight, a lot of that work is going to be done above us, and that is called the loading platform. So again, if the uh, pipe is moving, the arbor is going up and the pipe is coming down. So if I unlock it again, and the arbor is going all the way up to the loading platform. Now whatever items we're going to attach to the pipe are going to be attached, whether it's lights, scenery, curtains, signage, whatever, and we're going to have to figure out what that weight is going to be. Then we're going to call up to the loading platform and say, add X amount of bricks, add three bricks. If you're on the operations rail, you never want to be standing underneath someone as they're placing their counterweights. Always go to the extreme side of the rail, either into the spiral staircase or underneath this ladder right here. Because if there is a problem and someone would mishandle one of these steel bricks, the 33 pound pieces of steel, and drop it, we don't want it to hit a person. Um, if it hits things, that's not a problem. We can replace things, but we can't replace people. So the communication from the deck and the operations rail to loading is really important. If people are on the stage, you want to make sure that you've given that warning. Loading bricks! That means if you're on the stage, you've got to go to at least the center of the stage, to the center line of the stage, so that you are safe. Then the operation of placing the bricks will occur. The bricks are put in place, and then you're ready to move the line set and check to see if it's in weight. To check to see if the line sets are in weight, it's a fairly easy thing when you unlock it. If you give it a little tug and then let go, you'll see how this line set stops. That means that it is in weight. If it drifts one way or another, if the pipe continues to drift in, it means we need more weight in the counterweight arbor. If it comes down, it means there's too much weight in the arbor. We're going to have to take a brick off of it. So again, you would communicate to the people that are up on the rail, the loading platform, and let them know what is going on. The other important thing to know about line sets is uh, spike marks. Spike marks are ways that we can actually um, mark the line sets and bring the pipe into the same position every time that we use it. So let's try that with the second electric right here. You can actually see this one on the second electric right here. So here's an example of a spike mark right here. And we're going to find a line center we're going to make our own. So we'll take this one right here. So let's say this has signage on it and we want it to stop at a very specific point. So we bring it in and whoever is making the artistic decision says that's exactly where it needs to stop during the show. So to spike that we're going to take this stuff here which is called spike tape. It comes in all kinds of very different bright exciting colors. And you rip off the spike tape. And then you're going to take that spike tape and put it on the rope right above the knuckles of the lock. So it's going to wrap right around that. Now when you fly the line set out, when you're ready to hit that spike mark again, you're keeping your eyes up and you're looking for that tape. There it is. When the tape is once again right above the knuckles of the lock, you turn around and that pipe should be exactly where the director wanted it to be that has the sign on it. So that's how you use a spike mark. To remove them, you just fly it out, lock 
it up, rip off the tape, and you're ready to spike it again if you'd like. Um, some people like to use two spike marks or three to make it very big. Just don't put so much tape on it that when it tries to pass through the lock, it's going to get gunked up in there. But you can mark it any way that works best for you so that you're definitely going to hit the spike mark that you need to hit. So this is the counterweight system here at the Flagler Auditorium. Two different types of line sets, double purchase and single purchase line sets. Um, inherent risk is involved. The loading platform, you want to make sure that there's good communication between the loading platform and the operations rail, which is where we are right now, and also good communication to the deck. Um, the counterweight system kind of separates the big boys from the amateurs. So the Flagler Auditorium is a professional theater, so we have a counterweight system. Every professional theater in the world is going to have a counterweight system very, very similar to this. Um, and again, knowing how to operate it is how you keep people safe. The last thing we want to have happen is have any injuries in a theater due to people not knowing how to operate the equipment properly. So we will have our hands on this. There will be a hands-on test. You're going to learn how to use it and we're going to keep everybody safe and it's our next step in learning how a professional theater works. Uh, we will see you next time and uh, we will start practicing with our hands on the counterweight system. Thank you for your attention.